What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Hold a Hustle Podcast. I'm your host, Terry Duran. Uh, I got both of my co-hosts on the line with me. I got my man, Jay. What's good, bro? Not much. Looking forward to another lit episode tonight, but hit a new milestone, over 14,000 followers and rising on, on the Instagram page. So shout out to everybody that's that's been following. But want to quickly remind you, you can catch us on Ground City TV, Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can download it on your Roku TV. Also, you can download it on the Google Play. Also, make sure you follow us on, on YouTube. Subscribe, like, share, and everything. Also, give us a follow on, on TikTok at Hold the Husband Podcast. All right, T. Oh, we also have my other co-host. I got my man, SD. What's good with you? Nothing, man. I'm just happy to be here. I had a the roughest plane ride I've ever had in my life yesterday. So uh, Damn. I'm just I'm just glad to be here, man. What, you know what I'm saying? What you fly, Spirit, man? No, nah, it wasn't Spirit. <laughs> it was one of them American Airlines planes, but it was a smaller oh. plane. And uh, man, let's just say I did a lot of, Lord, lay me down to sleep. I pray my Lord, my soul to keep. You know what I mean? While I was on that, but hey, I want to give a shout out to Brother Soul Productions for keeping the background music fresh all the time, the background audio. And I want to remind you all to donate to the Hold a Husband podcast on uh, PayPal and Cash App. Uh, I want to remind everybody, y'all can catch the audio playback of the podcast every Monday afternoon on the core94.com at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Uh, this week, uh, we got a real interesting guest that we'll be talking to a little bit later. Uh, but tonight's episode is titled, it's in our DNA. Uh, we're going to be talking about human behavior, our instincts in regards to mating, dating, and sex. Uh, so I think we'll have a real lit conversation. Uh, but y'all know how we get down around here on the Hold a Husband podcast. Uh, we like to discuss stuff that we've seen on our timelines or stuff that we've seen go go viral. Uh, so we we got a, a video where a guy is having a discussion uh, with his fiance regarding their prenuptial agreement. Uh, let's take a listen. I had a conversation with Maya Thinney. He was like, the contract 100% protects Bilal. I was like, you think I should put in something in the prenup concerning having children at a certain time, mm-hmm. as well as assisting me to start my business in KC. He was like, if Bilal is going to assist you in getting your business started here, mm-hmm. you have to be clear that what you own belongs, stays with you. That money is my money. And if something should happen to us, it's that you don't, you cannot fight me for that. Even though we are established in that, after we get married. Yeah. You see how your real estate, your companies, yeah. it's yours, your children. Yeah. I'm gonna have that for I, me. I get it. The reason why my real estate is my real estate is because I built it. Um, whereas let's say your yoga business, right? Well, you're looking for startup capital coming from me. You're looking mm-hmm. for help coming from me. Mm-hmm. All those different things, which I'm 100% willing to do that. If things did not work out yeah. and I did very successful and well, the equivalent is the same as saying that no matter what I built, that all of that would be me. Mm-hmm. Even though you have me built it, it's, it's all mine and yeah. you get none of it. That's an example of what you're literally asking me. If Bilal says, I have to sign a prenup, there are certain things that I want. He has to set up my business here in Kansas City and it just belongs to me. Damn. All right, now I'm from Kansas City, so shout out oh. to the crib. But sis guy, she it's so annoying to see women that have this type of selfish attitude. So she's essentially telling him, um, I want you to fund my business yeah. and give me a hundred percent ownership, and if we break up, you get absolutely nothing. Hmm. Why would he do that? You know what I mean? Like th- this just shows the level of entitlement because if a woman is in a position to be marrying a guy that needs a prenup, she's going to walk away in a pretty good position in her in the event of the marriage because she gets to. They, it's not like you can just pre- present you with it. It's something that she has input on. Mm-hmm. Uh, what'd you think when you heard it? Because this is a no oh, for man, me. Listen. I thought she was on some type of drugs. That's what I thought. <laughs> I ain't gonna even lie to you. Like, hold on, let me get this straight. You want me to fund it 100%. And if you make 
10 million dollars off of it and you decide to leave at that point now you want to walk away with all 10 million and not only that but most times they also want the half that you made during that time Right. They're not willing to give up your half that you made because it sounds like to me he wants to protect what he already has. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Before, because he said, hey, what we established after that, that's, it, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's how it works. That's how it's supposed yeah. to work. Community exactly. property means anything acquired after the marriage is, you can split that in a divorce. Right. Um, huh? But go ahead, Jay. I'm saying, why would he sign that deal? Why we sign a deal like that? Number one, like what what person that right might hell? What person that drunk mind would even sign something like that? He's funding you the capital to start your business. So if it succeeds, it's all yours. But if it fails, then she's just gonna put it on him. Oh well, you gave me the money. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah. And See. he sees it though, but he <laughs> sees it. That's why yeah. he's talking he talked about. And, and if I was him, I would stick to my guns. I'm not doing it. If you want to go, because clearly she don't have a lot it seems like financially of course not. Else, why would you need him to fund your business 100 percent? so she don't have a lot and I it was her, interesting i'll see you later the the person that she's getting her advice from it, it she said uh he, he said the prenups 100 percent protects you but it doesn't protect me what do you need protection for <laughs> exactly. what what does she need protection from <laughs> when you but, like these, these are the type of things that we that mm. I, I talk about all the time where women, but, the only time a woman can get a guarantee or assurance on how a breakup is going to go is with a prenuptial agreement. And most times women will fight, have a problem with it because yeah. it limits the amount that they can get out of a man. Right. Yep. That's why That's why a lot of them, I heard her talk about kids. Now, a lot of them will have them kids just so they know, hey, okay, well, True. if we leave, I can get some child support from them exactly. for 18 years. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be careful of women like that um, that's only talking about money that, they gonna, that they're that they going to get through you. It's nothing they're doing on their own. It's what they're, you're giving them. And for me, that's a red flag for me. And I would definitely yeah. be reconsidering the entire relationship I, because of it. Exactly. I, like, absolutely. if he married her, there would be a epic fail. Like, yeah. it would be a major mistake. Even yeah. though she, she'll she get to live the lifestyle that he's able to provide with his wealth, mm -hmm. that's not enough. Um, a woman like that has this type of mentality is almost guaranteed to have a bitter divorce because she's going to be trying to take you to the cleaners. Um, I saw, she, I, um, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I thought you were done. Go ahead. No, I was going to say she already got people in her ear trying to coach her on how to get, get in your pockets already. Yeah. yeah. And um, somebody has said, I have read like some comments under that one that she was from mm -hmm. another country too. She was oh. from yeah. another country and came over here. And it's like you can almost see the writing on the wall with, with the way she's <laughs> talking. Coming from another country that was well, she, you know, probably don't have much. And she's like, hey, well, OK, how can I get money established for me? Because if you don't plan on leaving this guy, right? right, because you coming over here to be with a man that's got some money, right? If you don't plan on leaving him, you're going to have everything that this man has. You're going to have the luxuries that he has there, right? So why you want to establish a complete business outside of him that you can walk away from him scot-free with? But like, no way. You got to go. Yeah, that's the. Yeah, I, I hope he didn't do it, man. I, I don't exactly. know exactly what show that was, uh, but I, I hope he did it, man. Because that's if he went ahead, went through and married this woman, that it seems like a just a finesse move happening in slow motion. Oh, come up. Um, now this next video that we got, uh, we don't. I don't have the actual video. Uh, I have a, a clip from Eight at the Table where they were discussing it. Uh, let's let's take a look at the situation nobody likes to get their time wasted period so a guy takes a girl out on a first date spends eleven hundred dollars on the bill no bueno that's od the girl gets her ex to come pick her up from the date Big and disrespect. he doesn't hear from this girl again Duh. and he files a lawsuit to sue her Good. for wasted time mm. what do we think about this I think dude is a crash dummy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, listen. Uh, yeah, like this is all on you, bro. I don't I don't really have no sympathy for you. 
Yes, it was the ultimate disrespect. She played you like a fool. You on a on a date buying buying bottles and doing all this, running up a tab, and she's confirming her dick appointment with her ex. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> date. You know what? Man, ultimate when, I, when I heard that, I thought um he was on drugs as well. Because <laughs> ain't no way I'm going to spend eleven hundred on a date. We going yeah, out of town if I spend money on a day eleven hundred. We going somewhere, right. but we ain't going to STK and getting all these drinks. Uh, no, ma'am, I got Mad Dog Twenty Twenty at home. <laughs> we can, <laughs> we, can, we oh. can get drunk off of that, but eleven hundred on the date, like, come on, man. But see, uh, he got played, but it, I think he was trying to play her. A lot of dudes are try to buy the chicks by by um. Uh, mm. putting out a lot of money like that and she she finessed him on the flip side man. like that's yeah. gotta hurt so, man you spent 1100 yeah. and another it's, dude come pick her up and it's, get to eat her leftovers that he paid oh, for man, oh, man. Take, that's the worst take a sip of his drink man, that's <laughs> listen you spent 1100 dollars on a first date that's a, why would you spend why in the world would you spend 1100 dollars on somebody it. just to, going doing all this to try and press it just for her to go smash another dude, mind you, he ain't spending nowhere close to eleven hundred dollars on a date. Come on now. Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean, stuff. any any time guys do that, you know, extravagant first date, um, that's usually a manipulation tactic. Yeah. Unless you dating a guy that's a celebrity and or and he always eat at five star restaurants and, and stuff like that. But for the average guy to just to just to have one on one time with a woman does not cost a thousand dollars. Um that now can you go somewhere nice and run up a couple hundred dollars yeah that's normal you know what i mean um it's not necessary you can you can obviously have a date cheaper than that 40 30 dollars is someplace just a couple drinks or appetizers or whatever the case may be but to to run it up to 1100 dollars, he definitely was trying to finesse or buy the pussy indirectly so i don't have any problem with him getting played hopefully he learned his lesson um yep. but Sis well, played made him to the mat. You know what? Oh, On go the ahead, flip actually. side of that, like, I guess you know, if he, it's like it says she never talked to him again. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? That, <laughs> that that sound like that was her plan from the jump. Probably. And, she and probably, I'm she, sure bro. she got signs of that though yeah. from Shorty. Ain't no exactly. Way just women can do that. Like, but but listen, women can identify lanes with money, just like men should be able to identify a gold digger. Absolutely. She just she was better at yeah. her, her her scouting report than him. Or she, or he was a complete creep during the date. And he's oh, talking man. about, and hold on, we got we gotta say it though. He Go could ahead. have been being overly sexual towards mm. her because he was spending money and he yeah. trying to get close. Hey, you gonna come back to my place? You gonna do this here? Look, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And then she like, Man, look, I'm gonna call my I'm gonna text exactly. my ex to come pick me up. But why else would she get picked up by an ex unless this dude is because I'm just now thinking about it, unless he is doing something that's completely turning her off. Yeah, like, true. I, I, I can agree with that. It. You know, know what I'm saying? I think if if it's one thing we can take from all this fellas, you shouldn't even leave with your money in the first place. You know, leave with the cops, leave with the other stuff, but don't just leave with your money and try to spend yeah. a bunch of money, think it's gonna press the woman. Because clearly, yeah. you see, that wasn't the case. That, that only impresses broke women. Um, yeah. And that's for, for women that have careers and have their own money, that's actually a turnoff, you know, that they get offended by guys that try to run that game. Um, and it, it, it looks lame, you know, when, when you yeah. when you are focused on, look how much I spent on a date, just so that you can remind people how much you spent on a date, That that's the sucker in you, you're yeah. talking, yeah. you know what I mean? Because yeah, that's not, I'm, man, go ahead. I'm sorry. Man. No, I was just gonna say uh, the amount you spend on a date never equates to the quality of the date. Yeah. Exactly. I went through oh. that I, um, as a, as a youngster. I never went through that particular phase in my life, like trying to impress or, you know what I'm saying, pay my way into a chick like that. You know what I'm saying? That ain't the reason why I tried to do things for women or pay for dates or whatever. Like right. I don't worry about date money, but I'm not gonna be a I'm not gonna be a sucker either or a simp trying right. to impress you with that. Right. Like, I ain't doing it. 
All right, man. Let's uh let's keep things rolling, man. Uh, let's see if we can get to one of the questions we got in our DMs. Uh, if you were interested in having your question or your situation uh, spoke about on the podcast, hit us up on our Instagram page, slide in our DMs, and, and, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, what we got in the inbox this week, fellas? Uh, we got a question from Tammy. It says, what does it mean when a guy says, you're more than friends and less than lovers? Is it worth continuing <laughs> and con- pursuing the relationship? Well, it means you are smack dab in the middle of a situation ship. Yeah. Uh, and those are the type of vague, confusing phrases that guys give women to keep them confused. Um, he, he, you're, you're committed enough where he can trip about you talking to other guys or you showing interest in other guys, but you're not committed enough to where he's going to give up his singleness. So... <laughs> It's, 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 it's a lose-lose situation for you, sis. It, it happens. You know what I'm saying? It means that you are smashable, but <laughs> you aren't uh, relationship material. Well, for whatever reason, in his eyes, I don't know how you are as a person. I don't know your personality. I don't know any of those things. But you also have to understand, he enjoys whatever it is that they have going on. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. He enjoys the sex. And he enjoys the company or the companionship that you all do have. And if that's not enough for you, because he's being honest, you have to respect his honesty. He's like, True. yo, we are, we are um, more than more friends, than friends, but <laughs> we not platonic lovers. Yeah, yeah, like he's being honest about it. So you got to respect that. And if but you, well, well, ho, ho, he, go he's, ahead. Being, he's being uh, cute with words. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because he could he could be direct and just let her know look we casually dating we friends with benefits we something to that effect to where you open it you are free to do whatever you want because you single you know what i'm saying like he could have been direct but he's hitting that we not quite lovers he's talking kind of in that pandora cliche vibes i get it but when you're not in a committed relationship ladies you are free to do what you want. Absolutely. It says we're more than friends, but we're less than lovers. So no relationship. You are single. So therefore, it, it, it is up to you whether you are loyal to this man or not. Not up to him because he's letting you True. know what he don't want, yeah. which is a relationship. But, so go ahead. Yeah, no. I mean, he told you what it is. Sounds like he doesn't want a relationship, but he wants to keep smashing. Clearly, of course, of course. So of course. The, but but the guys option. like but situations like this, he is 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 uh they don't want her to be smashing nobody else. Yeah, of course. Like, that's the part that makes it hypocritical and yeah, um. That's true. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You. you know I what I mean? Do. Because 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 in situations where I was just smashing a chick. I don't even bring up lovers, love. I don't even start oh, nothing with L O V L O V words. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. We're not going lovers. Like that's not how I'm talking to somebody. I'm smashing casually. Uh yeah. so especially if I know she she loves me or wants to be with me or whatever. Um this just sounds like the classic situation ship um right. where he's just he's just trying to to keep things from he don't want it, you to be upset. So he's going to give you nice, cute phrases <laughs> to keep things just like they are. Yeah, you know what? You, you, you're you right. Because yeah. when he used like less than lovers, then <laughs> it indicates that they not just sex buddies and that's it. They have some type of companionship and time that they spend right. with each other. So it's a little more deeper and she's in her feelings about it. Because like you said, somebody that you're just having sex with, it's certain conversations that we won't even have with a woman or certain words we won't even use. This woman will say, oh, I miss you. And and I, and, and a guy will say, <laughs> you miss what? <laughs> Just so I, I don't have to say, I miss you too. Because we don't wanna, want it to cross over into that lane where you start catching feelings for right. us by saying certain things because women get uh, they love to they already gonna care yep. things yes so you keep them at that arm's length and say oh what you miss you know what i'm saying like you just <laughs> yeah. don't use words like love like you said i ain't gonna even say love a bowl I ain't gonna <laughs> like, right no. 
switch. No, I like you. You're cool. <laughs> I mean, at the, right. at the end of the day, here she has the option to either continue with this or right. not. That's right. It is 100% right. up to her because she's single and he's single. Yep. Facts. All right, man, we about to take a break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to be getting into our topic of the night. It's in our DNA. Uh, we have our guests coming on. This is going to be a real good conversation. Y'all are tuned into the Hold a Husband podcast, and we'll be back in a moment. Hi, I'm relationship coach and Arthur Terry Duran, and I am pleased to announce that my book, It's Not That Complicated, is finally available as an audio book. So if you don't like to read or you just don't have time to read a paperback book, this audio book is perfect for you. You can listen to it while you're in your car, while you're at work, etc. In the book, I break down how husband material men think and operate in regards to sex, love, and relationships. And I provide real quality insight on how husband material men approach dating. The audiobook is available on audible.com and on iTunes. All you have to do is go to one of the websites and search for my name, Terry Duran. Go download your copy today. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Hold a Husband podcast. Tonight, we are talking about it's in our DNA. We're talking about human nature in regards to sex, love, and relationships. And we have our special guest. We got my man, Suave Q from Instagram. What's going on, bro? What's going on, guys? Happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Already, no. man. Uh, we've been rocking with you for a minute. You know what I'm saying? You're a prior guest on the podcast, sir, so you know it's all love. Uh, before we get into the, our conversation, can you let our audience know a little bit about you, your background, your relationship status, etc.? cetera? Um, yes. So I'm Suave Q. I go by the Q Pill. That's the name of my book that I've recently put out last year. I'm a certified relationship coach, independent behavioral scientist, been studying psychology, mate attraction, um, human nature, mate selection for the past nine, 10 years. And currently I'm just out here trying to continue to spread truth and about the gender differences between men and women and how we can use those gender differences to our advantage to make better relationships without trying to change the other gender and manipulate the, the other gender too much to the point where it's unhealthy. Okay. All right. Yeah. Man, I, um, I like what you're doing, man. Yo, yo facts over feelings type content, uh, Hurts a lot of feelings. Uh, I, I get a, a lot of zero fucks given vibes, uh, but that's all good, man. You know what I'm saying? If you're speaking reality, you know what I mean? Like that's the opposite of pandering. So it's always respect from, from our end. Uh, what? How did you become a behavioral uh, scientist? How'd you get into that? Um, initially, when I was studying psychology, I was just trying to look at a way that I can implement what actually goes on with human beings and it's essentially coming down to well what is it based in how do how do we get to the point where we're at today what is it about us that makes us behave the way that we do and so i opened myself up to actually putting forth the research methods and stuff that i learned through my studies and actually going out and using social experiments you know surveys polls and just trying to get empirical evidence uh, based on what women, what men experience when they date and how that ties back into how we've evolved these make preferences that we have. So essentially, I just started studying human behavior, conducting studies and then going out and observing it from my clientele to observing social media behavior to my actual personal experiences all accumulated into what we have now. And I operate as an independent behavioral scientist. I, I know a lot of other, you know, uh, certified relationship coaches, marriage therapists, a lot of other psychologists and stuff like that. So when I'm taking my notes, writing down my observations, seeing what ties back into what, what phenomena we know to associate with men and women, uh, according to how they select mates and how attraction works and the gender differences, that's what it came from. Just me studying every day all day pretty much the literature the research okay wow. that's what's up uh, <clears throat> i was gonna ask you about um the modern woman uh this this comes up an awful lot <laughs> where do, what do you think because when i hear them talk i i hear i see very little logic behind their behavior um, and we already see that they're not getting the results that they want. 
So I wanted to just ask you, why do you think there's so much pushback when it comes to trying to give women constructive criticism or put them on a path to achieve their relationship goals? Well, for one, it's because of how they perceive the criticism that they that we give them. They assume that we're trying to put them back in some type of oppressed state. You know, you hear them always say, you know, they reference, oh, this is the patriarchy. Y'all just want us to get back in the kitchen. Y'all don't want us to. Yep. Y'all don't. It's misogyny. It's sexism. (laughs) That's essentially what it's rooted in. It's rooted in the fact that they already perceive it inaccurately they think that it's a knock against them or it's us trying to take something away from them and put them at a disadvantage but it's really funny when you think about it because what they put themselves at a disadvantage with a lot of the behaviors and the mentalities that they exhibit because modern women are repulsive to the traditional man and they don't seem to understand that yeah you know they don't mind the patriarchy uh when it's time to go to war you didn't see you didn't see none of them chicks out in ukraine very few of them was up there when they was making men stay there yep. to fight mm. all these dudes from yeah. 16 to 60. Yep. the women didn't say this ain't right we don't like this that you're only letting the men stay here they didn't say that so it depends on what it is but we see that a lot on social media when uh, uh with a lot of women where if it's beneficial they're okay with the double standards of things yep. as long as it's True. beneficial to them. True. They don't mind the patriarchy when dudes is out there in below zero weather digging holes for buildings to go up. They don't mind stuff like that. They only mind it when it's on their end and they have to perform their traditional duties or when they talk hey, about you. the man got to pay most <laughs> of the bills because he's a man. He should be a provider, but they don't mind that type of patriarchy though. So I don't pay no attention when I hear it. <laughs> So, a quick question for you. Yeah. Do you think monogamy is natural for men and women? Mm, that's a good question. No, it's not natural. Um, even more so for men, it's not natural. And if you if you look at um, our anatomy and our, physio- our physiology, that's actually what indicates that. I mean, the reason that we've even evolved penises and testicles is because that we're not monogamous and because women were not monogamous it was a it was a natural adaptation to combat the fact that they weren't monogamous the fact that they cheat now when we say women aren't monogamous we mean that a woman will hop on the next best option if the option that she if she currently has isn't uh, an adequate suitor so once she's dissatisfied or, or a better man comes along with more money more resources more power more status then she'll gravitate towards that man whereas men we're not naturally monogamous because of a phenomenon known a phenomenon known as paternity uncertainty you know women have concealed ovulation they have con- they they we can never tell who the father is not right. not factually so we combat that by naturally desiring multiple women the more women we make with the higher our chances of actually fathering some offspring so that's what that essentially comes from it's just simply the fact that we yeah. can't tell yep so so, well, so that that phenomenon or that idea uh, of women looking for the the best mate with the most resources that's hyper hy- hypergamy hyper hypergamy hypergamy yes yeah. yep it's, it's 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 a woman's it's a woman's desire for a ma- the best man and a man who's more competent at everything than she is so just like you see with educated women if a woman has mm-hmm. a phd she want a man with a phd if a woman is making wow. 100k she want a man that make at least 100k they want men who do better than them at whatever they do and they want the man wow. that's better than the rest of the men at whatever they do you're right yeah i think that's a really unrealistic um because those are not necessarily the things that uh or make a man a quality husband or a quality father um in regards to dating you know one of the things that makes men have success is having to study the behavior of women having to observe women like you mentioned earlier you you were you were always paying attention to women why do you think that they don't want or they have so little interest in learning about men i think they have so little interest learning about men because they think that males are supposed to cater to them they think Mm. that they're the prize so if you're the prize then essentially you don't have to put much effort into actually learning because you expect the men to come at you you expect to be the men everything that you want they want you to be you expect to be you know what i'm saying you don't have to put effort into it 
because wow. it's he got to come at me. He got to chase me. I'm the I'm the prize. I have the vagina. I'm the one who who he should be fiending for chasing. And they and they don't feel compelled to simply for that fact. They value the idea that they're the prize. That's what they've been sold. That's what they've been propagated. That's wow. what been reinforced throughout their childhood, throughout the media. So that's what they believe. So they don't and, feel the need to learn to make. And throughout dating. And throughout dating because we as men, especially young men, we add them all the time. And now with the invention of social media, they got 100 mm. guys in their DM at any given moment to where they think, hey, I'm the prize, I'm the prize, but they don't understand until they're older that the prize that most of these men are trying to get to is what's between their legs. It's not what's up here to put a ring here. That's that's right. what most of them are running yep. into now. Like, so all this, I'm the prize stuff, it's cool when you are a good woman with a good head on your shoulders and, and, and know your position out here uh, in a relationship and want to play that position for a man yes you are a prize but that those type of men husband material men are also prizes too because so True. many of you all are trying to get him it's millions of them on social media trying to find out where these guys be at right? where they hang out at how can I <laughs> exactly men ain't doing that like that but so question uh, quick question for you so why do you think so many people believe in dating strategy that doesn't make any logical sense especially when it comes to women you know choosing a man well a lot of times it's people they just trying to appease the masses you know especially with women women don't make sense and women are the ones <laughs> who chase dating the most they want to meet their dating goals so in order to appease women in order to get your demographic your target group then you have to pander and simp you have to reference a lot of their ideologies and, and and hit on a lot of their values so if it was men if, if you were predominantly catering to men or trying to show men how they could improve their dating life then it would it would make more much more sense logically but women are the ones who are desperate women are the ones who they all want love they all want a, a eternal happiness they're happy ever after so in order to in order to help them achieve that you have to sell them that dream and even though it doesn't actually work we we, we speak their language and their language right. is nonsensical mm -hmm. so that's why we that's why it's nonsensical to begin with all the dating advice just simply caters to their feelings yeah yeah i agree so so this is one I hear a lot of when these here women be out here trying to pick dudes, right? And you can tell me which one that, that you have heard that don't make no sense. So this is one for me. Pick a man that loves you more than you love him. I'm sure y'all have heard that, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'll be like, well, how in the world, where's your love meter? How do you have this love meter that can tell you that this man loves you more than you love him without playing games with him? without holding back from him and doing those types of things. But they believe it and they believe it to the core. Like that's, you can't shortcut this process of trying to get into a long lasting relationship or marriage, but they try it all the time. Can you think of any that um, flawed dating strategies that, that women have, say all the time? Well, well, let me let me let me just hint at the one that you just said. That's actually mm -hmm. a concept called asymmetrical commitment. And it's funny that they're okay. sold that because the opposite, the, the, the research in the data shows the opposite of that. The relationships last longer when the woman is more invested in the man or loves the man more than the man loves the woman, even when even, it even outweighs them just perceiving the same amount of equal commitment. So that's mm -hmm. really interesting that they're sold that. But another but another interesting one that I can think of, we can think of the one such as, you know, uh, valuing the woman's feelings or the woman is always right her feelings are always valid now that's happy the, wife happy yep. life yeah. yes those are some oh. of the most uh, egregious narratives that relationships could ever have because what? it takes two to tango and if you want something to work and you value that man then obviously you need to value that man's feelings and input as well which means mm -hmm. it can't always be on you and we see a lot of women are uh, are egocentrical mm -hmm. They're, they're yep. entitled, they're selfish. They want everything to revolve around what they feel, how they feel, what they want, when they Absolutely. want it. And it's supposed yep. to be exactly how they perceive it in their minds. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of simps out there that cater to that. True. You, you, we see them in the account, I'll do this. I'll, let me pay your bills. Let me do this. Like they they just con constantly volunteer oh. more and more stuff because yeah. they, their strategies with women are very ineffective. And that's really all they know or all that works for them. 
so I saw there are a bunch of men um, that that empower these women that have these flawed mentalities, these that have these hypocritical or um, really selfish perspectives on men and dating in general. Uh, so a, a lot of guys just have to, to become better men and learn that you have to be able to tell a woman no in order to have their respect and have a be able to be the actual man of a house. Yeah, uh, every woman got to respect a man. Like he was saying, yeah. like going back to the, the actual studies of it, if a woman don't admire her man and look up to her man in Facts. some type of way as the leader of that house, she won't respect him. And a lot of times, them type of women cheat on those types of guys that they don't right. respect and leave him rather quickly because they don't have that connection with a dude like that. So I, I think that's, I ain't never thought about it. I didn't know it was a scientific study, though. <laughs> Not to use it. Me neither. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Q, yeah, I, 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 I wanted to ask you, bro, um, in regards to how people are behaving now in 2022, uh, what do you think has more of an influence? their natural instincts or their natural behaviors or societal pressures or influence um it's their it's their natural instincts or natural behaviors and and when i mean that i say when the cameras aren't rolling when they aren't on social media when they aren't putting on their main concern is them those desires that they seem to forget about when they get on social media that 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 instinct to survive all those things are still present you'll have women who say they don't like this type of guy turn around and go fuck that type of guy you know what i'm saying <laughs> it, it's it's because because yeah. the, because the emotional component of it that visceral attraction she has to the traits that he exhibit that she's evolved mm -hmm. to be attracted to she's mm -hmm. still going to naturally respond to them cool. and society is just trying to convert us to what we think is fair and what's good and politically correct but in order to survive, you can't be politically correct. And at the end of the day, mate attraction and selection is survival. So mm -hmm. it's always gonna be natural. It's always gonna be human nature that overrides what society so, tells you. So, yeah, that's yeah. so Q Suave is- Good point. So that, that's a great point. So the, the nice guys finished last round. Is there a science behind it? Uh, yes, typically what, not, what, what constitutes a nice guy is a guy who's either trying to please the woman and it can creep her out to a degree to where it comes off as he's trying to be too good but essentially right. what it comes down to is the guy is too agreeable his personality is too agreeable he's trying to be too nice as 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 he hinted you have to respect your man uh, a man that can keep a woman's respect can always keep her interested and sexually aroused but when you're too nice when you're too agreeable you give her what she wants you say yes too much that indicates that you're afraid to lose her and if you're afraid to lose her that means you have no options and if you're always focused on her that means you have no purpose so all of these things subconsciously convey to her that you're weak that you're a poor mate that you you you're just a low quality male yeah, wow. i like That's how you tied that all in there yeah. That's why that's why you got so many of them online right now talking about, oh, we like the Russell Wilsons. We want the Russell Wilsons. Go look at their baby daddies. Go look at ah, the, go yep. look at their last boyfriends Features. and these here dudes that they done mess yep. with. They don't resemble no Russell Wilson because all of them know or have a Russell Wilson that they passed on or got in their DMs right now. But they friend don't zone. like him like yep. that. Yep. They friend zoning him, but they'll get online and say, Oh, we want a Russell Wilson. Yeah, sure you do. After they DM ran through one. Yeah. After, after <laughs> yeah. they ran through and washed up. <laughs> oh, yep. And hit the wall. That wall right here. And they like, okay, Russell is my last option. I better get me a Russell since he's a I mean, guy. but but see the part that they don't want to talk about is it's because he's worth a hundred plus million dollars. Like fun. that's before then, we saw what type of woman he had in college, and he's the starting yeah. quarterback for the football team. You know what I'm saying? Like goofy looking yep. shit that <laughs> nobody would want. Like, so it's different if you if you the type of dude that future been smashing bad chicks in Atlanta his whole life. Before he was famous, before he was rich, and the swag just magnified once he became future. Uh yeah. and so that ties into what you what you were saying earlier how women will say that they hate we hate guys like this but those be the first guys that they they letting hit raw yep uh for sure yep. i mean look at look at sierra she was she was baby mama number six bro Damn. she was baby mama number six 
like and, it ain't like you was two, you was six. Yeah. <laughs> and and they'll run and they'll run to a Russell Wilson because they know that Russell Wilson is still that nice guy. Nice He's still guy. that simp. So he'll yep. give them that yep. chance after they've already been ran through and tried to tie down the guy with the masculine traits, the masculine attitude, the masculine tendencies that they couldn't tie down. He's the last resort. She wouldn't have even got with Russell Westbrook if he wasn't rich and famous. Totally. Yeah, but I mean, they, they don't want to talk about that. Absolutely. They don't want to talk about that. Um, so the, so what? real quick question, real quick. So how do you think the fake bodies and the BBLs impact mm. men from a scientific perspective when it comes to dating? Um, I, I really don't, I really don't believe men. I, it's a, it's a, it's a, what do I, what do I want to say? It's a status symbol essentially. So you have these okay. women, you have these women getting these BBLs and these, and these fake tits and stuff with guys who are prestigious or in positions of power, but it's only for the look. The average man doesn't desire it. I know I damn sure don't. I don't want a woman full of silicone. That's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a turnoff, you know, it's well, a turnoff essentially. Yeah. And then women do it because they think that's what men want because they see men going after women who already yeah. have those things naturally. Mm -hmm. So, so they think getting the fake version of it, getting the great value version of it will, will result <laughs> in the same amount of attention that the women who already have it naturally get. So it's, it's intersexual competition. I don't really see a huge difference with the desirability amongst men. Cause a lot of men will say that they don't like it and they don't want it and they won't commit to it long term. They might experience but they like with it short term. Yeah. Yeah. They like term. it. They might, they might it experience with it. Sundress yep. season, yep. all that. Yep. It, it works as yep. long as it's not deformed or that's you know the problem like, to, where, to where i'm looking at your shit crazy you know what i'm saying like, yeah like, bugs like <laughs> yep. listen i had yeah. this chick come over man and her belly button was over here under her arm i was like yo why your belly button yeah. over there yo? wow what you the hell? Hey, man, some of it wasn't that far but it was all center it's my point I know I ain't cockeyed, right? And I'm looking at it like, <laughs> why is your belly button over there? Like, and she was like, oh, well, I had this and that. And like, she was stiff. You know what I'm saying? When I mm -hmm. hugged her, she was stiff and had things going on. Like, I get it. Wow. But, you know, but a lot the of body them looked, but, but, but it looked like in that. clothes, in clothes, it looked great out of the clothes. Like it was just like holes and different things. And, and, and you could tell she was kind of embarrassed by it. I wasn't acting a certain type of way, but you could tell she was embarrassed by it because, you know, she's trying to cover up and hold certain spots. But a lot of women don't understand that sometimes it can be boxed. And now you're really insecure if you was insecure mm. before. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Yeah, uh, for me, and I think it's yeah. just a physical thing, man. You see yeah, that it's in clothes. Short -term. Yeah, yeah, you see it in clothes and you'd be like, God dang, look at that. And then See, you but I think I think it's the biggest indicator of a woman's mentality, though. Um, I couldn't I couldn't see myself wanting to be with a woman that wants to go pay or right. risk her life to get a booty just so everybody can look at her booty <laughs> everywhere she go or she can show her ass in our stories and et cetera. Like it's like, damn, man, your self-esteem is that yeah. low or your perception yep. of yourself is that man. Um, it's, I, I couldn't enough. deal with that. Right, and some of them, some of them go to Dominican Republic, spend that five hundred dollars to get that BBL done. Five hundred. Yep. Hey, hey, Q. What do you think about the the impact that social media has had on the dating world? Oh, it's it, for women. For women, it's 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 made it more difficult. Uh, men are having less sex now. The 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 rates of of men who actually get sex has has mm -hmm. risen. It's really? increased. Yes, oh, it's, it's, oh. it's increased. It's increased. Like uh, a lot of men aren't getting sex. That's that's what I'm gonna say. Like a why lot of men are because because women. Why not? Ain't it easier? Yeah, that's what I'm I thought. It well, you gotta think with these women chasing attention. Now they're in situations I was just discussing earlier with with another individual. They're in situations where they're exposed to guys. They can actually interact with high value guys. They can actually interact with high quality guys. I said once a woman understands what she can get just one time, if she can get that attention, she doesn't want any attention from anything else lower than that. And then and then women are naturally still more selective than men. So a lot of men don't have game. We look at a lot of these men. A lot of these men don't have game. When these women expose them in the DMs, they say the corniest shit. It's like, how you expect to get her like that, bro? Like, you couldn't think of a better punchline, a better way to approach her than that. So, 
a lot of the times nowadays with dating, it's definitely worked in the women's favor, but it's declined the rates in which men excel at getting sex because these women are on their high horse. They see now I can get all this free validation and attention from all these different guys. Some got blue checks, some lawyers, doctors, all these different men who I didn't have exposure to before, I have exposure to now, which means there's a lot more lames in my DMs that I don't want and I'll just ignore altogether. Yeah, but the yeah. decline in sex for men for social media also made a decline in marriage for women, I believe. Because okay. a lot more women are out there with OnlyFans, being naked on there, and all these other different things right. that they do on social media to where the guys that actually do want to get married are like, no way wow. I'm going to put my last name to this here chick here. So I think it declined for for both as far as the sex and then the marriage for the women, for sure. Well, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm still shocked to hear that because I always thought, I mean, social more, y'all know I'm, I'm the married when I've been married 18 years. So I guess that's why, <laughs> but I, I would think, you know, cause I was on one of the early pioneers of getting pussy for online. Couple texts, no. couple conversations is all it takes to get a woman's interest in you if she liked your pictures and shit. Yeah. So I thought that guys by now would be more proficient at sparking up a conversation and transferring that conversation to text and sexting and smashing. Who uh, represents so the minority gotta, though? Yeah, you gotta understand though. Most men can't articulate like, themselves yep. well. They don't, yep. they, they didn't grow up in the era where they actually had to talk to a woman. See us, we grew up where smartphones wasn't around when we started nope. dating and talking to women. So we have to actually approach a woman, get her number, call on the crib or whatever, and talk to her. A lot of these dudes don't know how to talk. So like Q said, like he said, hey, they, they slide in the DMs with a basketball emoji. Like, oh, did I drop my ball over here? Like, <laughs> <laughs> or a dog. Yeah, or a dog. dog. My dog over here. My dog <laughs> roamed over to your DMs. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is this lame? Like, social media, social media just, it just emphasized the lames that don't know how to talk exactly. to women. Yeah, exactly. But the guys that been getting women, they're still getting women, even on even online if they want them. So that's correct. Whatever. That's accurate. That's accurate. Yep. Yeah. Well, I tell women that uh, when they ask me about dating apps, I'm like, man, the the men that y'all really like, they're just on dating apps for fun. They already successful with women in real life, so they'll be bored sitting down watching a game and looking through pictures. Like, isn't something to do when there's nothing to do type of vibes. Um, and so they'll be trying to use a dating app as a life hack to try to meet a quality man. But I'm like, man, you finna be sifting through a bunch of lames that are just going to be enamored with your photos. Um, and so it, I guess it, it's the same type of thing. The guys that are already successful, it just enhances social media and, and technology just enhances what they already had. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's yep. that's a, that's that's a few of us. That's a handful of us. So the rest of them still struggling. They got it. They got the confidence behind the keyboard now, and they can hide their pictures or whatever. They can say whatever they want, <laughs> but they're still lame. They don't want them dudes. No, they don't. They Not don't. No matter how much they lie. <laughs> at all. <laughs> at all. They don't want them. All right, Q. So man, look like we about to get up out of here. Uh, before we go, man. Let everybody know how they can get your content, uh, what you got coming out, and what you got going on, man. All right. Y'all can follow me on social media. My Instagram is the Q Pill. Uh, my YouTube channel is doing well. It's steadily growing. It's also the Q Pill. Um, you can follow me on Twitter, uh, Q underscore pill. And my TikTok, if y'all want to follow me on there, I go viral on there quite often, is Q Pill Official. That's where you guys can follow me. That's where you guys can see my content. That's where you guys can schedule a session, reach out to me, ask me questions, advice, all that good shit. That's what's up, man. We definitely appreciate you uh, coming on the podcast. Uh, before we get up out of here, man, I want to give another shout out to my man, Brother Soul Productions, for keeping us laced with our background audio. Uh, I want to remind y'all to continue supporting the podcast by donating to our Cash App and our PayPal. Uh, JSD, man, I appreciate y'all linking up with me so we can get another episode knocked out. Uh, this has been another episode of the Hold a Husband Podcast, y'all. Thanks for tuning in. Peace. <laughs>